Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I've been a little bit of MIA last couple of months or so. Um, one of the reasons is that this summer I lost my grandmother and it was really hard on our whole family uh, emotionally and um, that's one of the reasons I took a break this summer from filming a lot. Um, however, her legacy of cooking and all the things she taught me uh, definitely is something I carry with me and she is one of the first people that taught me how to cook and she taught me how to cook a lot of Ukrainian and Russian recipes um, growing up in Ukraine as a little girl I was always um, in her kitchen and she taught me the basics of cooking so this is an homage to her so this is for you babushka I'm gonna make uh, cabbage three different ways so three different recipes uh, cabbage is a staple in a lot of Eastern European um, cuisines and um, this is uh, my take on it so I'm gonna start with sauteing cabbage and what I'm doing here is I'm gonna actually saute it or um, cook it down in a crock pot this is a really easy way to do it um, after shredding it I also added a little bit of carrots a little bit of onion maybe about half of an onion and um, for my spices, you've got your classics, dill, bay leaf, a little bit of parsley, something I added later on. I set it, set it to low for four hours. I think in total it ended up being five and a half hours to get the cabbage just the right softness. Um, but this is a quick way to do it without having to stir a lot. Um, and I also added a little bit of water, probably a cup of water. You could also use broth just to keep the vegetables sort of steaming in the crock pot. This is what the cabbage looks like the next day. I let it chill in the refrigerator because I wasn't really ready to use it until the following day. So for this sauteed cabbage, I decided to make it the filling of uh, piroshki. So piroshki uh, can be made um, both in the oven, which I'm going to do, and they can also be pan fried. Uh, I decided to go ahead and um, let the dough rise. Then I filled them, baked them, and they turned out really delicious, really savory. Um, I think I wanted the dough a little bit softer, so I think next time I'll try pan frying them. Um, but they they turned out really well, and all the extras that I had, we only ate about half of these, um, uh, I froze. So they're easy to freeze, and they store well in the freezer. My third recipe is fresh cabbage salad. And again, this is, um, this is gonna be only with oil. And this is a classic kind of salad for Ukrainian or Russian uh, events. Uh, all we're adding to it is fresh carrots, fresh onion, salt, pepper, and oil. So just think of it as like the American coleslaw, except without the buttermilk or the mayonnaise. Um, and I think this is a nice, ref more refreshing version of that cabbage salad or cabbage slaw. You can also add a little bit of lemon juice or vinegar, and I think I added about a teaspoon of vinegar at the end just to make it a little bit more tangy, and then uh, also season with any kind of fresh herbs that you have on hand or dry herbs. Um, this turned out really great too, and again, this is a recipe from my childhood. It reminds me so much of my grandmother, so it was nice to make this and eat it and enjoy it in these hot summer months. So this is what it looks like all mixed up together. You can let it sit in the fridge for a couple hours just to let the flavors meld together. This is a really fresh side just to eat by itself um, with some bread or it can be a side to a dish. I would normally, if this was for dinner, I would normally serve it with um, like, a, like some kind of meat patty or meatloaf and some um, mashed potatoes. My final recipe for cabbage is sauerkraut. Um, on this day, I, I made some dinner and I'm eating sauerkraut that's store-bought. I bought Boar's Head uh, brand at Publix. This is great. This one is simple and doesn't have a lot of other seeds and spices in it. It's just plain cabbage and I prefer that way. But of course, you buy whichever ones you like the most with pep uh, pumpernickel, for example. Um, here's my little Russian meat kotlet. Uh, or Ukrainian kotlet. They're very similar. Fried potatoes and with something that's very oily like this, it's great to have something sour and fermented on the side. And then I also made a uh, beet salad and I ate all of this with a couple of crackers. But I want to show you how you can also make sauerkraut uh, at home 
It's really simple. It's really just two ingredients, just finely shredded cabbage and salt. The ratio is one pound of cabbage gets two teaspoons of salt, give or take a little bit. And I'm going to can these in my glass jars. And these are not going to go in the refrigerator. We're going to actually ferment them, let them sit in the pantry for about three weeks. Um, and again, with just two ingredients, that is so simple. Uh, once you have the salt, you want to massage it into the cabbage for about five to ten minutes until you see the cabbage start to release some liquid. This is what it looks like after kind of squeezing the cabbage for about five to ten minutes. And I'm also going to let it sit a little bit longer in its own juices just to let the salt release even more liquid and once that's done you want to pack it into the jar really really tightly and get rid of any air bubbles which you can do that using a really long skewer or any other kind of long stick that you might have here I've got it packed really tightly into the jar you don't want any of the cabbage to touch um, air so you want it all to be fully under liquid and the way you can do that is add a few cabbage leaves at the very top uh, not shredded ones or any other kind of vegetable leaf at top press it down with your weights uh, if you don't have a weight you can wrap a uh, rock in some in a plastic bag and really you just want the about top one inch to be water inside the jar and you cover or um, tighten the cap very loosely because it will produce gases and as the gases are released some water may leak out too so that's why I put it inside a casserole dish just to catch any of the liquid you want to let it sit about th three weeks for it to actually get that nice fermented flavor however you could eat it sooner if you wanted to some people leave it for two months it's really up to you how tangy and sour you want your sauerkraut to taste so I will be putting this in my pantry. You want to kind of leave it in a dark place with a uh, cool to normal temperature. And I will show you what it looks like in three weeks. So those are my three recipes for cabbage three ways. Saute cabbage that can be used as a filling in many baked goods or in a savory pie. Uh, fresh chopped cabbage that can be used in a fresh salad in many different ways. And also, of course, homemade sauerkraut or store-bought sauerkraut, which is a great side to any uh, very decadent and a hearty dish. Um, and it's also really healthy for you. So all these three recipes remind me so much of my grandmother and I will be sure to be cooking more Ukrainian recipes on this channel and sharing everything that she taught me uh, with you guys on my channel. She was also a big influence on me as far as schoolwork, arts and crafts, learning poetry, reading poetry, reading fairy tales, and also all sorts of sewing and knitting projects. So she was really a huge influence in my life. And this is just a short little tribute to her in her memory. Babushka, thank you for everything you taught me. I will miss you always. Я так давно тебя искала. И с каждым днём сильнее мечтала.